Welcome to Live Coffee Talk Show. I'm Michelle Quay. I'm a confidence and leadership coach who work with negative self talkers to get them to believe in the talents and strength that they have so they can be successful in both personal and professional life. Now, you are probably in a position waking up in the morning and you are pulling your hair out. Like raise your hand if you're not pulling your hair out today. I mean, just from what we have seen yesterday, last night, I'm sure a lot of us are actually having a really stressful morning already. Um, all that emotional dramas that we experience, um, it makes perfect sense why our hair is not so healthy. So if this is you, you want to stay tuned. And because today I have a hair doctor or the hair regrowth doctor, Ms. Precious Rutland. She is a certified uh, trichologist. And I will ask her in terms of what that means, trichologist. So it's a hair and scalp specialist, bra certified holistic health practitioner, complementary alternative health practitioner and CEO of Precious Rutland, hair and wellness uh, consulting. She is also a best-selling author of her latest Amazon bestseller, Her Regrowth, Hair Regrowth Starts From Within. Interesting. It's an eight-phase, eight-phase, I can't speak today, <laughs> eight-phase system to heal inside out. So what can you do to your hair from an inside out approach Without further ado, that's Breen and welcome, Precious Rutland. Hi, Precious. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm grateful. I'm so excited that you are having me on here. I'm super excited to have you on today because, you know, during this pandemic, I don't know if anyone shared the same feeling, but, you know, I was looking at the on the floor and my <laughs> hair was just, it was just outrageous. And I was counting because you know how they said that on average, you lose certain amount per day, yeah. right? So when I was looking at the hair, all, all the hair that I've lost, I was, I was thinking that's more than just the average. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful that you are here to share some really important perspective and it's something that's so um, apparent and something that we can actually see um, yeah. to, to be an indicator of how our emotional wellness or emotional being could be. So tell us about your experience and how did you become a hair doctor? Yes. So um, actually, I got into hair um, because it's always been a passion of mine. So um, I'm also a licensed cosmetologist here. Um, so at the time that I was going to cosmetology school, I was also working a full time job uh, in the private sector. And um, I just knew that it, it wasn't fulfilling, like my passion is doing hair. And so as the years went on, um, I end up had experiencing hair loss myself. So that's what really lit the fire uh, under me. So I lost hair twice. Um, the first time was traction, alopecia. And that's where, um, you know, you're doing different styles to your hair. They're too tight. It's a lot of friction and rubbing. Um, and then so my hair came out. And so luckily, um, I was young enough, still growing, thriving, just had kids, so my hair was still growing. So I was able to camouflage it and bring it back. Then um, a few years later, when I had my second son, now that's when the hair loss really hit me and it was postpartum hair loss. And I had never heard of it. Like I knew I, I knew about alopecia, and, and, but I had never really heard about po postpartum hair loss and that it could be related to uh, after you're having a baby. So I had um, just stopped nursing my son and it was about maybe eight months later six to eight months later and I noticed the front of my hairline was like going it was a super thin just really thin really diffuse and it was a little bit in the crown area that was gone and so I was freaking out and I was like you know what what am I going to do and so um, people couldn't really tell that I was losing hair the only way they would have known is if I had said something but it did I tell you just losing that hair it really did something to me mentally. Um, plus, I was at that time I was dealing with postpartum um, depression, is what they call it. And then on top of that, like I was saying, I, I was wanting to fulfill my entrepreneur um, job. And so um, 
So I was, I was dealing with the hair loss. Then I had my own personal uh, health issues. I, I was overweight, you know, because I, I wasn't eating right. And then um, I was also diagnosed, you know, with pre-diabetes. So um, it was just, it was just a lot just going on, just dealing with life. And then um, a few years later, after that, my, my mom had passed unexpectedly. And so that was like really the catalyst to like go all in or go home. Um, because I just distinctly remember she passed away unexpectedly. And it was just like, you know, I'm not going to leave this earth without touching the people's lives that I need to touch and sharing my story, fulfilling the, the purpose, the call that's on my life and helping them um, to change their habits, change their health. And so they too can in turn, um, you know, have healthy hair and to help women that are experiencing hair loss. Mm -hmm. And so um, each day as I'm, you know, learning on my, my, my trichology, I'm attending all types of conferences. I'm into natural health, really heavy into that because health, uh, mind, body, spirit, that all plays a role in it. You can't have healthy hair and not be healthy. The two just don't mix. And so um, like I'm a living testimony. So I walk my talk. So that's how I'm able to come before people um, and share with them and guide them on what to do um, because I've lived it. I've done it. I've talked it. I, I know what you're thinking. Um, and so I can help guide through that. So that was really um, the driving point, mm -hmm. how I got into trichology. Um, so knowing about the hair. Mm -hmm. What you know, I, I think a lot of people, um, what you brought up is very uh, a valid and real point that people, a lot of people don't recognize and they don't realize that, you know, something as little as, you know, the hair can, yep. can create so much of that uh, lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, you know, that physical appearance that we can look into a mirror and see every single day. It's like you wake up in the middle and, and uh, in the morning and you look into the mirror and you're thinking, what is going on here, right? And, and you don't really, it doesn't really occur to you until that big aha moment, well, I got to do something about it. This is not okay. And, and what you brought up about your mom's passing, first of all, um, I'm really sorry to hear about her passing. And, and you know, anything that's happening unexpectedly, it's really, yep. it has a great impact on, on us. So I'm really sorry to, to hear her passing. But that, that kind of was your wake up call in yep. realizing that something, you got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. what, what were you going through that led you to, um, that moment where, you know, this is not working. I got to do something about it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, like I mentioned, I had those diagnoses, um, from the doctor. And, um, as I thought about it, you know, you get, I got the information from the doctor. And then of course they were wanting to put me on, um, the blood pressure medicines, um, to, to get my blood pressure. Oh, that was the other thing. So I had high blood pressure as well. So I was overweight, high blood pressure, and pre-diabetic. And so um, they was like, well, I'm gonna have to put you on uh, medication. And so I begged and begged um, so they wouldn't um, because I never did get the weight down. So she ended up putting me on it. And so I was like, I was, I was just determined. I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna be on this too long. And that's what I did. I got my act together. I did what I was supposed to do and I got off of it um, as soon as possible. Uh, but the main thing was, I, I saw the pattern, like I was going down that same road um, that my mother had went down. You know, she had a, a, a lot of issues. She didn't deal with a lot of things from her past. And you saw, I, I seen it just add up, you know, cause she was diagnosed with the same thing. And I said, you know, I'm breaking this generational curse. It stops right here with me. Um, my family are gonna have me around as long as I can. Um, and as long as I'm able within my power, um, to help, you know, to have my health. And so um, that was just the determiner. Like, I'm either just to all go home or do nothing. So it, it was no either or, it was no in between. Mm -hmm. It was either you do it or you don't. And so I made the choice to do it. I mean, there, there is, there, it can't be no in between. Yeah. Can you, can you paint the picture for me in terms of you? Because you, right now I'm looking at you, you're skinny. You're like 
You are hot. You are hot. You are hot, woman. Thank you. I, I worked to get there. That's for sure. It wasn't no no cakewalk. So so I can't imagine you being you know having that overweight and and you mm -hmm. look you know high blood pressure, all diabetes, and like paint that picture for me in terms of how big were you um, back then? And and because what I'm looking at right now, it's nothing like yeah. that. Absolutely. Um, the heaviest weight that I had got to was 225 pounds. And just like you, a lot of people say, well, precious, where was the 225 pounds? Because I don't see it because I carried the weight well. So of course, the weight was like in my arms and then like my lower half. So like the hips and the thighs. Um, but I just didn't care for it. And it was also in the gut. So like I said, I had the baby. So I was just butt and gut, basically. And I didn't like it. Um, I just didn't like how I felt. Like there's no reason in the world if you can't make it up a flight of stairs and before you get to that top stair, you're out of breath. No, especially with me, I was too young. I was, um, I think 33 at the time. So it was no reason for me to be out of breath and can't, I mean, it was just like, come on. It, was, it, just, it just wasn't making sense. And then um, also, like I said, like I was just dealing with a lot of mental things just going on. So I was dealing with the the, the lack of confidence um, because I was, you know, being a parallelpreneur. So at the time when I come up, you know, the parents were always, you know, go to college, make something of yourself. So um, they didn't really look upon as, you know, the hair business, the hair industry really making money. And so... Um, I had my college degrees and everything, but I was like, this isn't for me. So like, I still fought all my degrees. I still have them, but um, so it's, it served me because I'm able to get the training that I have now to put, but so it I was wasn't able to something myself, that you wanted to do. Right. So I was able to put myself through the beauty school, the beauty college, you know, the training. So I was able to supplement and because by the time I got done with everything, I was like, I don't put myself through. Uh, another college degree <laughs> so um but that's how I got it so imagine you know just getting up you know taking care of the kids nursing them getting them to daycare then I, it was just like I'm going to a job it was mentally draining like I was just going just for a paycheck I mean they were you know just unappreciative so it was, it was like I was just going through the motions like I know I need to do this because society says you know, you need to work, you need to pay the bills. And then um, it was just like a disconnect. Like I didn't even want to be um, a mom. Like I just wanted to be myself. Like I want to go fulfill my passion. And so I, I just had to make that way mm -hmm. and give my own self permission to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it sounds it, like you said earlier, it's not, it didn't happen just overnight. It was no. a long journey. No, it, it was compiled upon years. Yeah. Yeah. What what was it like to actually be on that journey? Were you were you always, you know, because right now you're very uplifting, you're positive and you're happy. I see every time I see Precious, she's always smiling. She's <laughs> laying back because um, she and I connected through a speaking class and yep. and and it was just she's always laid back, very chill. And you see her with a big smile on her face. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but was that um, was that how you were on that journey and and yes I was I was like that on the journey um I would say when I was around people but you know because I like I always want to keep other people uplifted um going and motivated but then it was like when I was myself I was just down um and it was just just it just wasn't good. And then sometimes I would be so hard on my husband and kids. Um, my husband was like, I can't talk to you, you know? So he wouldn't even talk to me <laughs> so nice. He'd just walk away. Um, it was because I was coming home and, you know, from the job and then taking my frustrations out on them. And then it was dealing with the whole thing of how do I make my hair loss business work? Cause mm -hmm. I didn't um, have that role model. Like, like I'm starting this business from ground up. So it was like, you know, how do I even get it going? How do I even tell the people what I do? And then um, like right now with the people 
Um, most women, you know, they're all big into hair and it's all about looks, but I'm, you know, I'm getting the message across that, yeah, you can have the hair and the looks, that's fine. You have to take care of your hair underneath. Otherwise, um, it's going to come out. It's falling out. And I remember distinctly having to talk to one of my coaches about it because I'm like, man, coach, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I know all this knowledge. I have this good information. And it's like people, they rather want to camouflage or mask their problem rather than deal with it head on. And he spoke to me so clearly. He said, Precious, just let me tell you something. He was like, you continue to do what you do. You do post by post or just put your messages out. He was like, don't worry about who receives it, who's not coming, who's not coming. He was like, Precious, you're in one of those fields where they will come when they need you. <laughs> so I was like, well, they need to come now. I was like, because the longer you wait, not addressing your hair loss problem, the worse it'll get and the worse um, it'll be irreversible versus mm -hmm. jumping on it now. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just dealing with all that and just dealing with that confidence piece, like, man, just being a, a woman, you know, can I make this business work? Because I was in the beginning, I wasn't seeing it. Like I, I was working part-time because I had the full-time job. I wasn't in a good location. So, um, you know, and then it, it, I wasn't able to get that much walk-through traffic uh, where I was. So it was just tough, but I, ha I had to figure it out and just make it work. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not only making it work, you're actually <laughs> making it. Woman. Yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> You're yeah, actually yeah. making it. Um, you know, so I yeah, I totally, I totally hear you. And and you know, being an entrepreneur, it's not an easy task. So there's no. all these elements that's surrounding us that we are dealing with and we're coping with, right? Um being locked down in a COVID and you don't have a physical space to do your practice, to see your patient, that's like a real struggle and impact on your finance, impact your everything, you know, your, your relationship, your connectivity to others. It, it comes so overwhelming. Um, and, and one of the signs, one of the biggest signs is our physical changes during those yep overwhelming feeling. So I'm wondering, you know, as you're describing how you got into this hair, hair expert, hair doctor profession, I'm wondering why hair of all the body, body parts and your, your uh, as, esthetician. Um, so one of the things that, you know, why not skin? Why particularly hair? And, and your postpartum experience that was real. Was that something yeah. Um, no, hair, I, um, actually, I had my coach the other day ask me about that as well. And when I thought about it, like, I had been into hair since age 14. Like, I had just always been into, like, the different styles. So, like I said, it just has always been in me. Even in my family, mm -hmm. um, there's barbers and stylists. So, I was familiar with it, grew up with it, but um, it was just personal for me like I just like to see people healthy I love just to see healthy hair mm -hmm. um, so that's why I've been able to survive in it this long and keep thriving um, and be able to reinvent myself and keep going um, it's just it's just it's just has always been me. so that's how I know that this is what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. so, what, what, can you just take a look at my hair <laughs> So, you know, I, I kid you not, during the during the pandemic, I really lost a lot. And and I was so uh, desperate. And it yeah. didn't occur to me, because I, I met you in June, yeah. and it didn't occur to me until later when I met you that, oh, I need to look into my hair, because mm -hmm. I noticed I was losing a lot. And that was one of my, one of the signs, or it's always yeah. been the biggest sign that I am, I am stressed. Mm -hmm. When I'm stressed, I start losing a lot of hair. Yeah. Um, and and you my, my hairstylist was telling me that you lose you you lost a lot of hair um when when they when she reopened. So mm -hmm. I always knew that hair is something that's real, something that you can yep. you can take care of, something that a lot of people just kind of neglect. And and you know I have friends who are completely bald, men are yep. completely bald, and they don't realize that scalp is actually part of very important things that they have to take care of. They, they just think that, oh, I don't have any hair. I don't have to do anything with it. 
But I know one per, one of my colleagues actually came home one day during a hot summer's day, and he was he was actually、um, sunburned from the scalp.、Ooh. Yeah, see, yeah, the precious know how, how devastated that would be. Yeah, yeah. So for someone who's going through a lot of stress, maybe you know emotionally or mentally or physically, what are some of the tips that you can share with them in terms of taking care of that approach、yeah. from the inside out? Yes, absolutely.、Um, the first thing that you definitely want to do is definitely get your、um, eating habits under control. That's going to be the biggest thing. If you can't do anything else,、um, is get your eating habits under control、um, and drink your water. Drinking your water is going to help to flush the toxins out your system, keep your whole system lubricated, and hence、um, to help get the oxygen and the the, the blood flow that you need. Um, to your scalp and your circulation,、um, and then you definitely want to next go find ways.、Um, I want to say cope or find ways that help calm your system down. So, like as you mentioned, like right now we're in、um, COVID nineteen.、Um, you know, we're in that fight or flight stage. You know, because you don't know what's going to happen day to day. Every time you look up, you know, you're hearing the the cases for COVID going up or You get the news that someone you know has it, and then you know you don't, you know you you just don't know. There's some uncertainty about the job and everything, and so like right now,、um, it's definitely the case for hair loss is definitely going to increase tremendously、um, at this point because、um, your your、um, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system like it's just out of balance right now. So your adrenals are just pumping, and and so now it's taking all your nutrients and your resources from your organs. So your your potassium is going like all your minerals, all that's being burnt up right now、um, because you're you're under stress, and so that stress is triggering or contributing to what's going on with the hair. So now you compile that to if you had other underlying conditions, say if you had a, a poor immune system or you had some other illness going on. High blood pressure. I'm just just throwing those out there.、Mm -hmm. So now that's causing、um, the the progression of your hair to get out of its cycle, get out of balance, and then so that's what you're seeing right now. It's the the telogen effluvium. So、uh, what you can do immediately again is to definitely lock down、um, on your diet.、Mm -hmm. um, definitely, you know, bump up on your your vegetables. Then go into some sort of way of coping. Um, and meditating, and like right now, it's a good time to start journaling, or even just go outside for a walk and just get that fresh air through your lungs. Like you can even just do、um, deep breathing exercises,、um, and it doesn't take much,、uh, you know, to to help get your system on track. Because if you can't control your mind,、um, it's just going other places, and then that'll cause you to have. Um, other aches and pains in your body that you didn't really have, but because you're thinking it now, you see your body. It's like, oh, my hair is coming out, you know. So like, so then your mind is just playing all these tricks on you, and then it's like more hair is coming out than it was before.、Um, so those, off the top of my head, like those、mm -hmm. are a few things. Um, that you can do is just like just to get a hold of yourself. So body, mind, and spirit.、Mm -hmm. What 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 would be a good food to eat? Because I'm you know I'm a I'm a big foodie. I, I I'm I usually tell my tell tell people that I'm a on a diet and the diet I'm on is I'm on a seafood diet. So when I see food, I gotta eat it. <laughs> I love that. I'm on a seafood diet. All right. So don't be shy about food. But what would what would be some of the、that. food that I should be focusing on in terms of incorporating、yeah. more of? Yeah,、um, yeah. One of the biggest key things that you really want to focus on is like the leafy green vegetables. So, like, not the the lettuce because that doesn't help. What I'm talking about is like the kale, the spinach, the collard greens, like the Brussels sprouts, like those、um, flavonoids. Like, if you can get those into your system, you know they have some protein in them. They have your B vitamins in them. They have the potassium. Um, the iron, and that's、um, like some of the biggest contributing factors is that we just don't get enough of the、um, nutrients from the real food, is what I call it,、um, in our system. And then you definitely want to stay away、um, from like 
the the grains and like the, the whites, the pastas, the fries, because that they're like high in starch. Um, the, the, the white pastas and things like they get into your blood system and they they thicken the blood so then of course it's it's giving you that instant boost of sugar but then you're down again and then you then you're hungry again so it's causing you to eat again so you need foods that's going to be able to um, sit with you and keep you full uh, but at the same time it's going to give you nutrients so definitely you know minimize the sugar I know like right now in the pandemic you need that the comfort food. That's how I had my weight because I, I turned to food as a comfort. Mm -hmm. um, but you definitely want to stay away um, from those types of foods and then just really focusing on the more nutritious foods and putting together nutritious meals. Um, also just having like a colorful plate, like when you sit down to eat different vegetables um, from all colors, you know, tomatoes, carrots, like those different vegetables. And you can, you can eat them any kind of way, steam them, broil them, saute them. Um, mm -hmm. So you just have to, you know, find out what do you like and what's going to be good for you. Um, so those are always going to be my go-to. I know it probably sucks and you don't want them, but this is what like our body needs because, you know, we've compounded over time, um, eating these heavy foods, they make you sluggish, you know, you're dragging, you're, you don't have any energy. And it's like, okay, but you keep eating this food. And like, um, if you want to be real about it, food is our medicine. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you got to think about it, if you keep eating something, it keeps making you feel bad, keeps giving you heartburn, you got ulcers, you know, things like that, you know, stop, <laughs> you know, and then even some foods that you're eating is causing um, allergic reaction in the body. And it's like, okay, let, it's time to stop. Let's see what's called. Let's eliminate the cause and then let's switch it out. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of time when people come to me and say, you know, Michelle, I, I want to change, but, you know, I just can't do it consistently. And one yeah. thing that I often remind them is it, it's, it's how bad you want it, right? Are yep. you at a place where you're, you are okay doing it without it? So if you're telling me that you need the confidence, right? How bad do you want the confidence? Yep. If you want it so bad, that motivation, that in itself is a motivation, motivator that keeps you going because I want yep. it so bad, right? So if you want something yep. so bad, you're gonna go get it. Um, and, and the other thing that I've noticed, especially for me, and I often tell my mom is, hey, listen, if we don't buy those um, like burgers or uh, well, anything that has to do with pasta, things like yep. that, anything that we don't want to feed our body, then don't buy it. And, and it has to do with the seafood diet, right? If I see it, <laughs> I will eat it. If I don't see it, then I yep. will eat it. And so yes. you're making an effort to actually get the food um, out of your refrigerator or going to the supermarket. So you make an extra step for you to actually need to get it. And if you yes. don't want it, then you won't be getting it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of like a reverse psychology of, yep. of you know because I want something I'm going to make an extra step for myself in, in order to get it and if I have to take that extra step that may be um, my I won't be inspired I won't be motivated right. to actually take that extra step so you know <laughs> something that I've learned um, that might work and I love what you share about eating more greens you know because I, I thought lettuce is a is a is a form of veggie. <laughs> no, no, it it does not. It's mostly just water. But I know yeah. you can't really get your nutrients from that. To get your true nutrients from your hair, you're gonna need the real greasy green leafy vegetables. Definitely start there. And that's that's how I learned like what you need to eat to grow your hair back. And I'm like, really, I could have been doing this. And, you know, I mean, you can't tell now, but like once I started eating my leafy greens, my hair was fuller, thicker, like it came in like super fast. And I was just like, this all I had to do. But yeah, I, I love it. And it's like you said about the confidence thing, like when I lost um, the weight and was able to get myself um, off those medications and just really thrive um you'd be surprised like I had people like I had half the people would congratulate me it's like wow precious you did it you know and then I would have others like kind of waiting for me to uh fall back or slip or mm -hmm. they'll be like um you know well what did you do to to lose weight and I was like I just didn't eat that food like I didn't I don't do dairy I didn't eat chips I didn't eat cookies 
I let all that go. And they be like, like, they just look at me like, like, well, you're not really telling me anything. I'm like, I am telling you, you just don't want to let that stuff go. I'm telling you how to get the weight off. And I, I, I think at that time I was exercising like two days, no, two times a day, sometimes three times a day. And I was going hard at it for like six days a week. So, like, so that was like, like some months, like I put in the work. So it took me some years to get that weight off. So I didn't, of course, just drop the weight off all at once because it, it, I had to build that habit. And that's what people don't want to get into. They don't want to get in a habit. They don't want to change their lifestyle. And I was like, I can tell you how to get it, but you know, do they you want to do the do work? You, <laughs> yeah. They don't want to do the work. So yeah, they don't want to yeah. do the work. I love it. So how, how do you, what is it that you are um, doing? How do you work with your clients? Yes. Yeah, so um, now I'm working virtually. So I'm able to see anyone, anyone from anywhere we can meet virtually. And um, I'm offering um, info sessions. Um, and so to walk people through um, a, a game plan, a strategy, uh, as far as like if they're having, you know, hair loss, or if they maybe have healthy hair, and they just want to know how to keep it. So it don't, fall out. Um, so I'm able to create a plan for them and introduce them some of the um, programs um, that I offer. Mm -hmm. And where, where, where can people find you? Oh, absolutely. So you can go to my website. It's at www.helpmewithmyhair.com. And then you can also follow me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram at Dirty Hair Secrets. And then, uh, I have a podcast that I come out, release episodes um, every Tuesday. I'll soon be going to two episodes a week, uh, but you can go, uh, the podcast is the Dirty Hair Secrets podcast. And so on there, I'm sharing um, hair tips, um, you know, busting it out myths. I have tons of guests that come on um, and really sharing their knowledge uh, as far as, um, you know, hair, health, um, wellness, because I look at the whole component, not just hair itself. And so I have my guests come on um, and they're complimenting me and they're, you know, walking my audience through, uh, you know, about life and how to deal with everything. And so it's just a great time. Yeah. Oh, and also I'm on LinkedIn. Just type in Precious Rutland as well. So, so I just linked the uh, uh, help me with my hair .com .com. in the comments. Yes, thank so you. For those of you who's uh, you know wanting to follow Precious and and really get a get a free assessment, get help. You go and visit her on her website at help me yes. with my hair .com. Yes. And and you know one thing uh, what you had just mentioned uh, now was that. Um, it, it slipped my mind. See, I don't, <laughs> I lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> Is there come back memory? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, that hair loss can trigger a lot of negative self talk. So, yeah, <laughs> I'll be perfect. Um, so one last thing before I let you go. Okay. Um, I, there's a lot of things that's going on in this world right now. And, you know, negative, positive, let's face it, it's everywhere, no matter where we turn. Mm -hmm. And so from your perspective, what do you believe the world needs? Um, right now, the world needs great grace um, and self-love. Um, so a lot of that has been taken for granted. Um, just people in general, just harder, harder on ourselves um, than we need to be. And just realizing um, it can be solved with love. So definitely having your grace and the patience um, mm -hmm. and self-love. And one way that we can love ourselves is go ahead and ask for help. You know, yes. we, we can do this alone. We shouldn't be expecting ourselves to go through anything alone by ourselves. And there's always help, uh, whatever that you can think of that you are going through, there's experts that's out there. For example, Precious is the experts in hair. And if you're noticing there is any changes in your appearance and or you know, just that emotion and you want someone to listen to you and just be there for you and just kind of guide you through that process, ask for help. Yeah. Awesome.
Any any uh, last word before we end today? Uh, yes, uh, you just reminded me. Um, so um, you mentioned earlier about some of the things that you can do as far as um, hair loss and just taking care of yourself. So another tip that I wanted to put out there for you all is to definitely pay attention to um, the hair products, um, the different, um, I guess, body products and things that you're putting on your body. And so um, I did put my 17 top um, t chemicals, toxins, uh, and allergens um, that are contributing to your hair loss. So if you guys are interested in that, um, you can go to bit.ly and then that's forward slash 17 top toxins for hair. So that's bit.ly forward slash the number 17 to 17 and then top toxins for hair. Um, and that will really give you a guide, um, sort of like a just a checklist so that you can just keep an eye on your hair products, the products that you're putting on your, your body, on your kids, and just looking at those ingredients um, and seeing if any of those are in your, in your bottles. Um, and then just um, begin to consider other alternatives um, that you can uh, you know, eliminate and replace them with. And it'll help also to reduce um, the stressors that you're putting on your body and help um, minimize the hair loss. I love that because I've noticed that, you know, depending on what type of hair products I buy, and sometimes, you know, I, I guess I'm allergic to them. And yep. it's something I didn't realize that I was allergic to it. And so I had to stop purchasing a lot of hair products, a different type of hair product, and just stick to one because yep. that, that actually best suited for myself. So I'll put that in the comment as well so that everyone can take a look and this valuable gifts from Precious. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Precious. It's been, been a pleasure and I've learned so much, you know, about taking care of my own health, <laughs> my hair health. <laughs> I, I think this is something that I'm, I'm really proud of and it actually boosts up my self-confidence and just by yeah. having that, that look and you wake up in the morning and let's face it, we're all attracted to the beauty that's surrounding, yep. us, surrounding us and that's what makes us human. So every little things that you do for yourself that will count yep building that self-confidence. So thank you so much, Precious, for coming thank on you. to the show. Thank yeah. you. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching live Wednesday Coffee Talk Show. I, this is a show that I will be aired every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. So join me next week as I bring another expert in their area of expertise to share some really valuable insight with you in navigating through your lives. So stay tuned. Make sure you follow me on Facebook. and. Yep continue to check out my show. Bye, everyone. Bye.